What's up everyone, James here, and I am back at you with another Transformers video. If you are new here and need to catch up on everything that's gone on in the Transformers and the Energon universe, the playlist is right here and right below the like button. Now, in this video, we're gonna learn two things. One of them, you guys already know if you're longtime Transformers fans, but Shockwave proves, proves once again why he's the most evil Decepticon ever. And the second thing we're gonna learn is where in God's name has Beachcomber been this entire time? Before we get into the video, make sure you hit that like button. And other than that, enjoy, because it's gonna be awesome. Let's go. So this opens with Beachcomber explaining what happened to him and where he's been to Spike. He says millions of years ago, the Decepticons attacked the Autobots on the Ark while in Earth's orbit. So it seems like Daniel Warren Johnson is fixing the mistake he made early on in this series, where he had the Transformers state that the Autobot Decepticon War had been going on for 200 years. Now he's changing it to what was initially implied in the Void Rival series when Jeff Fire said he had been stranded for millions of years. Now we will see more of this Battle of the Ark and the Energon Universe special focusing on Megatron, which I will cover soon, that's coming. Anyways, Skywarp had thrown Beachcomber out of an opening on the ship, and luckily for him, he didn't end up drifting endlessly in space, but landed on the moon. I really love this image of him just staring at Earth from the moon. He was in awe of Earth's beauty so much, in fact, that he just sat there and stayed on the moon for a million years. And he also didn't have anywhere else to go. But anyways, he came across the Apollo 11 moon landing that took place on July 20th, 1969. He hitched a ride back to Earth. Once on Earth, while searching for the Ark, he found Earth to be just as beautiful on the inside as it was on the outside. He came across the wildlife of Earth and was astonished by it all. He eventually found the Ark and saw all the Autobots and Decepticons offline. And just as he was about to activate Teletran 1, and begin repairing them, he stopped himself. He decided to leave them there. He feared that if he brought them back online, they would begin the war again. And that war would bring destruction and death to Earth, just as it did to Cybertron. He believed leaving them there to sleep forever would assure Earth's safety and maintain the peace he found in it. Spike asks him if he's been alone ever since then, and Beachcomber answers no. He shows Spike that he has created a bond with the wildlife of Earth. He tells Spike that he saved him because he deserves to be saved and protected just like them. Now Astro Train interjects, calling Beachcomber a fool, pissed off that he has him chained down. Beachcomber offers some Energon to him as a peace offering, which Astro Train, to no surprise, refuses. Now, a big reason why Beachcomber is fascinated by Earth's beauty and wildlife, which I feel like Danny Warren Johnson should have stated in this issue for people new to Transformers, is because he's a geologist. But going on a quick tangent here, let's say he's not a geologist in the Energon universe. I would really like him to have that role, because if you've really paid attention to this series so far, you would see that most of the Autobots have a role within the team. We know Wheeljack is the engineer and tech guy. We know Ratchet is the medic. We know RC is the sharpshooter. We know Jetfire is the scouter and transportation. We know Optimus Prime is the leader and strategist. I mean, the only person who doesn't have a role is Cliffjumper. Unless I missed it, comment down below your thoughts on that. Astro Train reveals to Beachcomber he was taking Spike to Shockwave. When Spike asks Beachcomber if he's heard of him, Beachcomber answers every Autobot has. He is cold, calculating, and a deadly strategist. He likes taking his time when pulling Autobots apart. Spike informs him of the Decepticons' plan to harvest Earth, which puts Beachcomber in quite a dilemma, because he tells Spike he promised himself long ago not to hurt anyone or anything ever again, that he wanted no part in the Autobot and Decepticon war. On the Nemesis, Shockwave informs Soundwave that the Constructicons have already repaired the space bridge to Cybertron. He then asks him what he's doing, and Soundwave answers that he must repair Ravage. Shockwave becomes filled with disdain because Soundwave is wasting time repairing in his eyes what he would call a pet when they're so close to victory. He grabs Ravage and tells him he can build stronger versions of his Recordicons. 
I was so surprised that Danny Warren Johnson chose that obscure name instead of mini cassettes, but I like it. Shockwave plans to put Ravage's body into the shredder, which I was so surprised Soundwave was allowing him to do. However, something outside the ship distracts Shockwave, and he just tosses Ravage's body aside and has Soundwave follow him. What distracted Shockwave was this family of humpback whales that he tells Soundwave he finds to be majestic. At that moment, Scrapper informs him the feeder is ready. We see the feeder is this massive machine, and what it does is so crazy. The Decepticons activate it, and it literally sucks in the ocean, including the family of humpback whales, and all other sea life with it. Shockwave looks on, enjoying the death this machine has brought. At the dam, Wheeljack has successfully brought the Energon Turbine back online. Alita 1 and Optimus arrive. Wheeljack doesn't recognize who they're carrying with them, but RC does. She's shocked that Ultra Magnus is still alive. However, this somewhat happy reunion doesn't last long. When Wheeljack says Ratchet will get him fixed up, Optimus informs him that Ratchet has fallen. Wheeljack, saddened by this news, storms out of the room. Meanwhile, on the Nemesis, Shockwave visits the chained up Jazz and Cliffjumper. He tells them that he plans on talking to them about their time on Earth, and shows them his array of tools he's brought with him to help with that. Soundwave and Thundercracker leave as Shockwave begins torturing them. The interesting thing that we learn from Soundwave and Thundercracker's conversation is that they're not entirely happy about working with Shockwave. Thundercracker finds his tactics to be dishonorable, whereas Soundwave finds them to be brutal and simplistic. However, Soundwave admits that as much as they dislike him, they need him since he currently controls Cybertron. Unbeknownst to them, Onslaught is listening in on their conversation. Thundercracker suggests that they get Shockwave's help in mounting an assault on the Ark in order to save Skywarp, but Soundwave dismisses the idea. He says, you are a soldier of the Decepticon army. Your life is mine. Do not forget it. Man, I love Soundwave as the leader of the Decepticons. He is ruling with an iron fist. Back at the dam, Alita tells Optimus that what Shockwave did to Magnus, he'll do to Jazz and Cliffjumper. When Optimus says they have to get them, Alita responds that it took her an eternity to get Magnus and lost many in the process. She kind of throws shade at Optimus, telling him they could have used him back then, and could have used his help eons ago, especially when things got bad. When the Decepticons took over Cybertron and took Magnus, he had already left at that point. Optimus tries to explain that he was trapped on Earth, and that his leaving was for the good of Cybertron. However, his explanation doesn't matter to her. She responds that there is no good on Cybertron, and no Energon anymore. Only Decepticon rule as their people are starving and enslaved, while he's here enjoying his new paradise. That Shockwave will harvest this planet to fuel Cybertron and the Decepticon army. Optimus replies, we must stop him. Will you join me? Back at the Nemesis, Shockwave gathers the Decepticons and announces, using their small tech to gather all the resources of Earth would take a century. He says, our world is on the edge of devastation, and we must move faster. He uses the Energon gathered by the feeder to reactivate the space bridge, but uses it on a much grander scale. He uses the full power of the space bridge to bring Cybertron to Earth. As Cybertron fills the sky, Beachcomber and Spike look to the sky in horror. Shockwave says, let the harvest begin. Shockwave has brought death to Earth. Be on the lookout for the next video. Subscribe if you want to see it as soon as possible. That's the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this newest Transformers video. Other than that, have an awesome day and always remember every day to go beyond.